part 37, who the fuck did I marry? So at this point in time, I have filed for divorce. Um, I paid for the filing fee. The thing that blew my mind the most in that series is that man was talking to nobody. No one was on the other end of that phone. Like nobody. Absolutely no one was on that phone. That was probably the worst thing that I could have learned about somebody that I was living with because that tells me like, yeah, one thing, the, the lies. That's, that, that's bad. But that's delusion. Do you understand living with somebody that is delusional to the point where they're having conversations with themselves for 30 to 45 minutes every single day with people that don't even mess with them? I can't even imagine. Talk to the brother that lives in the building. That's coming up in that in the sack. In terms of proposal, you did not miss the story of the proposal. I said, would you want to share it? Because it was embarrassing. Basically, he gave me three ring options. We went to a jeweler at the Mall of Georgia. He had me pick out three rings. Somebody better get Risa Tisa a contract and a check, or there is nothing sacred in this world. Okay? Nothing. This lady has made a series on TikTok called Who the Fuck Did I Marry? It is about how she married a pathological liar during the COVID lockdown and slowly had all of this revealed to her over a year that everything he did was a lie. She explains this over a 50, 5 zero, 50 part TikTok series. Each video is 10 minutes long. That is 500 minutes of content. Do you understand? How expensive that is in an attention economy? It's the amazing story. Every second of it. My wife was explaining it to me last night. I cannot stop thinking about it. Every second of it. Reveal after reveal. Cliffhangers. Okay? We need this on broadcast TV, not streaming. I need everyone in America to be able to see this so we can have conversations about it at water coolers again. That's one of the problems. That's why we all don't see eye to eye, by the way. Because all of us are watching different streaming services and everything's on demand. We need this Thursdays at 9 p.m. on a broadcast channel. NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox. I don't care. Just not Tubi or Netflix. That's my only rule. Not Tubi because it won't have a budget. And not Netflix because they'll get the fucking casting wrong. Call Risa Tisa, Hollywood. Okay? Stop making, stop making AI-generated movies like Madam Web. Stop. Stop doing live action versions of old cartoon shows. Go find people like Risa Tisa who can hold people's attention on fucking TikTok for 500 minutes. Do you understand me? 500, she, a work day. She has, Lord of the Rings is 558 minutes long with the credits. She made Lord of the Rings over four days while driving. So somebody out there in Hollywood, find Risa Tisa, give her a check and a contract and maybe a good man. I think she also just needs, she just needs somebody who is just going to be nice to her. Okay? Thank you. Okay. So things that my pathologically lying ex-husband lied about backstory i'm gonna try to get as much of this as i can into this video um because <laughs> i hate when people say follow for part two um but i'm gonna try all right backstory number one we met in march of 2020 georgia got shut down locked down um two and a half weeks later we got married January of 2021, and we were divorced August of 2021. So keep in mind that this story is spanning March of 2020 until about April, actually, excuse me, June of 2021, because I kicked him out the house on his birthday. So um, we met online, Facebook dating and Hinge. I will never do online dating again, um, but that is where I met him. My tire blew on 285 just before Boulder Crest um, <laughs> on my way to our first date. Clearly, that was a sign. I didn't listen, but my tire blew and he met me at a gas station. Um, we were supposed to be meeting at Cheesecake Factory, but because the tire blew, he met me at a gas station, fixed my tire, then took me to go get another tire, paid for it. And I just thought, oh my God, this is the beginning of a beautiful romantic story. 
boy was I wrong so things he lied about every morning he would get on the phone with his brother we'll call his brother John he would get on the phone with John and he would be like hey babe um, John said good morning and I'm in the bathroom doing my hair because I still had to go to work at this time and so I would just say hey John you know call out hey John and you know he would he would relay back and forth what I said to John what John said to me I never actually talked to John on the phone um, and so he would be like, you know, I can't wait for COVID to be over. Me and my girl, we're going to come to see y'all. I can't wait for auntie to meet her. Side note, his parents were deceased. Are deceased, excuse me. Um, so he was like, I can't wait for you guys to meet her. Like, she, I know I'm going to marry her. I know it. He said everything I wanted to hear. Love bombing 101. This man wrote the book. So he talked to his brother every day. He talked to his friends every day in front of me. Um... He would be on the phone laughing, cutting up, you know, cracking jokes, telling them, hey, she said, hey, you know, um, tell, just having conversation like a normal conversation. I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't until he got kicked out of my house in June of 2021 that I found out every single phone call was made up. He was never on the phone. I don't know those of you who are watching you're probably like there's no way listen to what I'm saying everything I'm telling you can be verified every single phone call he ever had um, was made up the phone calls where he called to pay his car off made up the phone call to the realtor when we were looking at houses made up the phone call to the bank for them to release the money for the house that he signed his name for made up every phone call was made up his brother every day he and his brother had not spoken since 2015 when his mother died i found that out later on he made up every phone call he had no friends but yet every phone call would be my friend this my friend that the second lie his job he told me when i first met him out the gate that he was a VP at his company. He had been transferred from California to Georgia and he was in the process of, you know, getting getting himself settled. He was looking to buy a house. His job um, was VP of a major condiment company. I won't say the name because I don't want to get sued. Um, but he said that his job was VP at that company. It is fair to note he paid every bill. He paid all the bills. He gave me spending money. Like, even though we were quarantined, locked down in my little townhouse, again, the story was always he's looking for, he's he's trying to buy a house. So when we got together, it was, we need to buy a house together. Like, this is forever. We're going to have a family. Let's go ahead and find a house. So the lie was, is that he was a, he was a VP at his company. Um, and he maintained that lie every day truth is he was a temp he called me from work all the time I may have to make a different video to explain how he was able to lie with the work stuff so he would call me and he would pretend to reprimand employees who couldn't see that he had a Bluetooth thing in his ear he would pretend to reprimand them in front of me he would pretend to take phone calls from the company president who needed his help on something. He forged emails that he showed me from the company president asking him, you know, we need to get this up and running. We need to do this project. We need to do that. Um, it is scary how brilliant he was and how much energy he put into the lie. But he was a temp. He was a temp forklift driver. There's nothing wrong with a forklift driver. But he was pretending to be a VP. Third lie, housing. He told me he was looking to buy a house. We got together and we started looking at houses. I found a beautiful five bedroom, six bath house in Smyrna, Georgia that was gorgeous. It was brand, it was, um, brand new construction build. And I love the house. The house was listed for 699000 He showed me paperwork from Chase Bank 
saying that he was approved for a mortgage for $750,000. Yeah. I watched as he put in an all-cash offer on this $699,000 house. I watched him sign his name to a legally binding document for an all-cash offer. The reason why the house fell through was because the builder did not want to finish the basement. We were requesting that the basement get finished. He did not want to, so he declined our offer and took the offer of another couple who didn't need the basement finished. That's the only reason why that house fell through. I see now where God's grace protected me because well it really protected him because legally i was not his wife so i was not on the mortgage for that home so third lie had to do with housing fourth lie had to do with um the baby so i got pregnant lost the baby i was sad at the time i am not anymore um but lost the baby had to have a dnc when I was in the hospital, the doctor called him to let him know, you know, she's she'll be discharged because again, this is COVID, so you could not go in the hospital at the time when I had the surgery. So the doctor called him and said, you know, she's going to be released in an hour and a half. He pretended to be his own executive assistant, and so he said, you know, Mr. James is in a board meeting, but I'm his executive assistant, David. How can I help you? you can let me know what's going on obviously the doctor wouldn't do that so she just said you know please let him know that miss so-and-so um will be ready for pickup in an hour and a half he told the doctor um he's in a board meeting until about um for an, for about another 30 minutes and then he'll be on his way i should have only been in the hospital for an hour and a half i was there for three hours because again he was a temp forklift driver so he couldn't get off work but I didn't know that at the time. So those are just some of the things that my pathological lying ex-husband did. There's so much more. I have severe PTSD. And I know it's my fault. I know that I did not trust myself. I did not, I did not pay attention to the United Nations of red flags. I did not pray. And I am paying the consequences for that. So there's nothing anyone can say to me, girl, you was dumb. I was I was desperate. I wanted to be married. I wanted a, I wanted a family. And I thought it was my turn. And instead, I I got pulled into something my brain could not even comprehend. And guess what, guys? What I just told you is only 5% of the story. So yeah, let me know if anybody knows somebody at Lifetime. And also, um, if any of you got any sort of gift cards for Stella Rosa Black, I'll take those as well. That's my story.